not noticed it. Let's just talk for a minute about the response of the Catholic Church, and then I want to go to our third clip and then go to questions. But what happened when those stories hit, and they would have hit people's doorsteps at the time? What happened? Well, it was very powerful, and as portrayed in the movie, we were expecting a flood of phone calls. We did staff up on the switchboard, and we were anticipating at least the possibility of uh, protests and things like that. Uh, so we did prepare. We did prepare for that because after the, the Globe did these stories about Father Porter, there was a strong anti-Globe uh, reaction. Uh, the Cardinal did, in fact, call down the power of God on uh, the Boston Globe, and the editor did break his leg uh, a immediately after that. It's all true. Um, so I was prepared. Um, I was walking very carefully. So, uh, but uh, so, you know, initially there was it was incredible that there was, with the exception of the spotlight team, which was starting to get hundreds of calls from abuse victims. The rest of the switchboard was quiet. I mean, we were not getting calls of complaint from right. Catholics. And, and I think the reason is, is because the stories were so well documented. We had actual documents. Mm -hmm. uh, we could show uh, exactly what the church said, what the church knew. It was completely unassailable. They couldn't challenge anything. And so, um, and so when people, but ultimately people got angry. But they didn't get angry at us. Hmm. They got angry at the church, okay? They were furious with the church. They felt a strong sense of betrayal. Ultimately, the cardinal came out. He gave a press conference. He apologized. He actually used the word betrayal, interestingly enough. And, uh, you know, as usual, suggested that this was a problem of the past, uh, hmm. that this was a matter of the few, uh, those sorts of things, promised to do better in terms of policies, things like that. And he also argued that, this had, that they had relied on medical evaluations, in the assignment, for example, of John Gagan, when they reassigned him uh, so often that he abused as many as 80 kids. So uh, we, the spotlight team uh, decided, that, well, they're gonna look at who are these doctors. The two doc there were two doctors involved in, his medical, in John Gagan's medical evaluation uh, as to whether he was likely to abuse again. One was his family physician, mm. so that's not an expert. Um, and the other was a psychiatrist, but a psychiatrist who had no actual background in abuse. Mm. So that was a follow-up story, and that was pretty devastating, because for the cardinal to say, we relied on this, uh, well, they relied on nothing, uh, mm. essentially. They relied on, um, I mean, how can you put children at risk based on an evaluation of people who are unqualified to provide such an evaluation? So, you know, we kept doing stories and stories, and as the end of the movie indicates, we did 600 stories in the first year. Uh, we did probably 900 stories in the first year and a half. Uh, this drumbeat of stories uh, exposed even more wrongdoing, more, more by the church. Uh, and ultimately, there was a, um, a, a revolt in the, in the church. Uh, some 80 priests signed a letter calling for the cardinal to resign. I mean, can mm -hmm. you imagine what it takes to have a priest sign a letter calling for the cardinal's resignation. And toward the end of the year, he ultimately did resign. And uh, then, as the movie indicates, he went off to a very cushy position at the Vatican. In the Vatican. And uh, he came back to testify. I and mean, there was some question as to whether he was going to be indicted uh, uh, for having essentially enabled this abuse. And he was never indicted, but he was called back to testify. And he did come back voluntarily to do that, and then flew back to his Vatican perch. Hmm. 